Hi, are we live? <laughs> oh my god, guys. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Hi, my name is Alexis Riva. I know. Calm down. I'm excited to see me too. Hi, and welcome to Gender Recognition, the road to recognition. Woo! So exciting. So exciting. So we have a jam-packed 90-minute show. Just how are we gonna fit everything in? So we have um, we have trailblazers, we have interviews, we have exclusive performances, and we have some big news coming up, big news, big news. So this is to celebrate five years of gender recognition in Ireland. It's absolutely amazing. Five years, the ropes go fast. So um, where will we be? We need to celebrate this amazing uh, milestone. Uh, this is a fundraiser at the end of the day. We need the support financially to do amazing things to um, emphasize the trans voice within the community. So the text number is GCN250300. Is that correct? It is 5300. As I said, GCN, all proceeds go to GCN and they'll be emphasizing the trans voice within the community. So we have a hashtag because this is not my show. This is our show. It's gender rec five years on. Let me repeat that's gender rec five years on. So let me look at me notes. We do. We have some big surprises coming up in the show. So stay tuned. So let's go back five years. Let's have a throw back Thursday on a Saturday to that amazing day. <music> I've got such FOMO. I really should have been there. <laughs> I really I feel like I missed out, but that actually looks like an amazing uh, day. And I celebrated it in my own way. Uh, unfortunately, not amongst all the amazing people that made it possible. Um, but let's start the show properly. Let's get our first guest in. And we couldn't have a show without the amazing, the hilarious uh, Lydia Foy. Um, Lydia Foy. Um, is the person that started this fight. Um, they had uh, three court cases, which lasted over 22 years. I am sorry. That is ridiculous that that went on that long. Hi, Lydia. Can you hear me? Hello, 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 hello. Uh, great to... Uh, well, congratulations to everybody on this wonderful uh, technology. And, you know, there's so much I could say about all the frontline workers and old folks like myself uh, trying to uh, protect ourselves uh, but uh, at the same time all this um, wonderful work with technology uh, keeping everybody in contact not that I'm much no, good yeah, at it does. it's really important the I'm, actual communication it's important that technology. because you know Skype and everything else to talk for the for the the grannies to talk to the grandchildren and but I'm, I'm just impressed with everything of course it's miniaturized now I couldn't get my head around it but I'm delighted to say hello to everybody who's, um, you know, who's, uh, who can be themselves and, and enjoy. Um, I know it's not the same. Pride is not quite the same without a, a good old whistle blowing on a few banners and, uh, you know, and, and a big parade. But um, I think everybody is, you know, we, we got, I think the government gave great support to people who genuinely tried to, to keep the virus down in Ireland. And um, a great solidarity among people and more um, courtesy in social distancing. And uh, yeah. so I, I just wanted to thank everybody and say hello to everybody and uh, well done yourselves because um, without uh, five years, 
uh, to me it seems about 30 years because of the long <laughs> battle but um i'm trying to get my head around the five year thing but uh, it was lovely to see that the shots of, of uh, michael and all of the the other Sounds workers like in Broden and everybody um on the day and uh, of course there's so many memories now built up but um, when you say five years the struggle uh, seems to be an awful lot harder an awful lot longer than five years but it's wonderful to see young folks now and um, you know with the uh, declaration of incompatibility with the European Convention on Human Rights sort of gave more push to marginalized people in general never mind us um, minorities or whatever I, I was corrected on, on calling minorities I was talking about some of the black folks one day and I, I inadvertently said minorities, they were actually majorities <laughs> who were struggling for rights at the time. But, yeah. uh, in, in our case, I suppose we're at the end of the rainbow to some degree. But um, um, anyway, congrats to everybody this year and have a great pride. And I know we're sort of maybe one side of pride now at this stage. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks to um, modern technology, as I say, and you young folks getting your heads around it much better than I could. All this technology brought us together. Thanks to neighbours and friends and everybody who helped one another um, during the uh, sort of lockdown and uh, trying to get old folks to behave themselves and and still give them a bit of support and uh, comfort without... Unfortunately, you would miss hugs and, you know, meeting young people but we have to be very careful still with the young folks apparently they can get it too so we're all working hard still but anyway well done to all of the young folks thank you lydia i have to ask because this this is about you it's not about covid we need to talk about the amazing oh, flight oh, that you did right. for so long what was the moment that just made you go no this is not acceptable and i'm going to start this um I was reading actually a newspaper the other day and it mentioned the German, uh, there was a German saying and it said, you're, you're not nice to a person once. It can be sort of a misunderstanding or a coincidence or an accident or a bad day at the office or something. If you're nasty to somebody twice, uh, well then again, it can be a, oh, a nasty coincidence or again, misunderstanding, whatever. But if you're nasty to somebody three times, then that is a pattern. Yeah. And really, it's time to do or die. And uh, uh, to, to, you have to, if there's a pattern of nastiness or rejection or whatever, then you have to stand up one way or another, uh, no matter how difficult that might be. Uh, you may be on your own, but... Um, just for your own uh, survival and dignity and everything else, you have to say, well, call a halt. Have I got the right of reply? Why are you doing this? And I said on very, very many occasions, um, through Flack, who were great, they, for the first time in a long number of years at the time, had got the right of reply. So if somebody said something very nasty, I was going to do something drastic to society, and um, said, so, well, wait a minute, you know, um, can I reply to that? Can I talk about research done in Amsterdam? Or can I talk, you know, uh, about uh, the reality for those who are marginalized? And uh, all along the line, they may have thought I was a total you-know-what <laughs> initially, but they were patient enough to listen. And uh, I can't overemphasize uh, the importance of the right to reply uh, as I say, one, two, three, three strikes, and then explain yourself. You know, it sort of works a bit like that. Yeah, you need yeah. to just have your limits. You know, you can yes. only take so much. Yeah. Um, but as I said, it was a really long uh, campaign. Well, exactly. How did you even like? How did you even keep yourself going? Because uh, I can uh, it's up enough for a month. <laughs> funny, funny few things happened, I suppose. Really, um, I. Well, in fact, there were people who begrudged me that, but I went back to, to, to try and re-educate myself in various areas. And one was to try and be able to type uh, a letter, uh, sort of, the, I didn't have the sword or the gun, so the, the pen is mightier than the sword or something. So I decided I should be able to write a letter uh, with a fancy heading on it, like they were talking down to me in, at various times. 
And uh, that gave me some little right of reply. And then um, people assume that you have got absolutely no brains um, if you're in that position and they try and marginalize you further by, as I say, not the right of reply and then disempower you by having no money and all of that sort of thing and distance, of course. But uh, when you could reply, um, they were sort of various, well, I, I'm not going to, at this stage, uh, uh, pinpoint anything, but I'm going to say that um, people become arrogant if they think they're superior and they make mistakes. And if you buy yourself a photocopier and record their stupidity and throw it back at them and keep the originals, um, that's one little thing. So that the pen comes in there as uh, part of the writer reply. But the disempowerment, of course, can be lack of money for a, for a photocopier and all of that sort of thing, and being distanced from the center of things uh, in the country, of course, as opposed to Dublin. Um, yeah. is a disadvantage and can be extremely tiring and of course courts can be very intimidating when you're on your own and a closed court uh, can be worse particularly if you say um, powers are unlimited with family courts etc you know so yeah well you weren't on your own this would be a good time to bring in a very close friend and um, yeah i was on my own for a long time but as I say then came along very, very good people, and I think you know exactly who I'm talking about at this stage. Yes, yes, yes. Um, who not alone was, you know, sort of about my age, but had a better uh, understanding of um, the uh, right re reply through um, modern media and through Europe. We got great support, but it was his help um, through the European Parliament and places like that. So um, I will let you introduce this. I this will, I will. <laughs> give him a nice clap and a hug from me. Yeah. Well, you can stick around while we talk to Michael. Um, so, yes, as I said, Michael Farrell is yeah, there. Um, if you can come join us, that'd be great. Michael, Michael um, is a, was a solicitor with um, the Free Legal Advice Centre. Uh, overall, um, a social activist and a good friend of Lydia. Yes. Yeah. Hiya, yeah. how are you doing, Michael? Can you hear me? Oh, no, we can't hear you. Uh, just a technical issue there. So, Michael, um, could you possibly unmute your mic? I think you did it just there. Yeah, can you hear me now? There you go, hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> hello. You can hear me, how are you doing? How hello, long? Can you since you've seen each other. Hello, can you hear me? I can, I can. Do you have 12 oh. minutes for any country? <laughs> um, yes, right, Michael. okay. So how long has it been since you've seen uh, uh, Lydia? Um, you're uh, an amazing duo, I hear. <laughs> well, hello, Lydia. Uh, months now since we've seen her because with the lockdown here, um, yeah. Probably she's the same. We've hardly been out of the house for a number of months. Exactly. But uh, I'm glad to see her here and looking happy. Um, yeah, okay. And I'm delighted to uh, <coughs> I'm delighted to be uh, involved in this. I think it's a great idea to commemorate it uh, because this is a really major milestone in our history. And when you put it together with the fact that two months ago was the fifth fifth, fifth anniversary of the marriage equality referendum in that short period of time this country took enormous steps towards becoming a kinder more welcoming more humane society uh, so i think it's very important and uh, as far as lydia is concerned uh, this would not have happened without her and i think the best way to sum that up is what uh, the president of ireland michael d higgins said uh, about her said that she played a crucial role, one that must never be forgotten in the history of campaigns for equality. Hers was a long journey requiring much more than patience. And she did mention there 22 years. It is 22 years since it was 22 years from when she first wrote to the uh, Registrar General looking for a new birth certificate in her female gender. 
And it took that length of time <coughs> before eventually the law was changed and she was able to get the birth certificate. So an extraordinary length of time and also a, a, a really difficult uh, struggle for her because it took a long time to get to court. When she got to court, uh, it was a very difficult experience. Now, I wasn't representing her at that time. It was one of my colleagues from, from FLAC, and I'd like to pay tribute to FLAC for supporting her in all this time and for uh, Mary Johnson uh, and Maureen McGuire and Ellen Redmond, who were the solicitors who dealt with the case before me. But um, she had a very difficult court case. It lasted 14 days. She was cross-examined on her intimate life. Before that, she was forced to undergo humiliating medical checks and so on. And at the end of all this, it took a further two years to get a judgment. And when she got the judgment, it went against her. So, you know, I can only imagine how demoralizing that was. And, and in the meantime, during the court case, she got a lot of abuse in some of the newspapers uh, and was actually abused in the streets as well. Yeah. Uh, because on, there was no understanding of, of transgender people at that time. But ironically, two days after the High Court here rejected her case, the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg upheld a complaint by two English transgender women uh, against the, the British uh, authorities who were operating in exactly the same legislation. So in a way, though it was very demoralizing to get a defeat, there was some good in it because two days later it indicated that there was the possibility of winning in Strasbourg. But it took another, what, five years to get into the courts again. Yeah. And in that case, uh, we were able to argue because in the meantime, Ireland had uh, incorporated the European Convention of Human Rights. So we were able to go into the court this time and say, look, whatever about Irish law, uh, this is clearly in breach of European law, which Ireland is bound to observe. And in that case, the judge, it was the same judge, and actually the judge who rejected her first uh, case was actually fairly sympathetic in what he said. And he did say that the government should do something about the position of transgender people. So this time he was he, he said that it, there still was no provision in Irish law to recognize transgender people, but that the Irish law was in breach of the European Convention and the government should do something about it. And he was very, very uh, angry, I think, with the government's lack of, of doing anything in the meantime after he had said that they should, five years previously, that they should be doing something about this. Yeah. Well, here but, we are. Five years well, in are, but I, I just wanted to make the point that it was another eight years oh, no. before the government changed the law. And I think that that's scandalous that you know, when a court finds that uh, Ireland is in breach of European human rights law, that they should just wait and wait for eight years. It should never happen to anybody else. Uh, Lydia was very strong to come through this, but in doing that, she did a lot for everybody else. She did a lot for Oh, yes. trans people of her own generation, but perhaps even more importantly for young trans people of other generations who won't have to go through, as, as you're indicating, and younger again. Uh, people who won't have to go through the same humiliation yeah. and hostility and uh, pain and suffering that Lydia and, and other trans people at that time had yeah. to do. Well, Michael and Lydia, thank you so much. Not just for just taking part today, but just thank you for all that you've done. Genuinely made so many lives. You've changed so many people's lives with the work you've done. Um, so uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for taking part. <laughs> well thank you, Alexa. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Fun fact, Lydia got the first gender recognition. So she's number one. And there's been a lot since then. Um, so uh, I'm very excited um, to uh, announce the next part of the show. Next part of the show, we are going to show the gender ref memories. So these would be the memories that we have been, uh, we have been uh, trying to get from the community. We've been using the hashtag gender rec five years on. And we're going to put them all together.
and then school is kingdom. But also we have an exclusive uh, performance from, let me just check me notes. Oh, where did they go? <laughs> Wallace Bird, an exclusive new song, I think I'm correct in saying, so let's go. How are you? I'm Wallace Bird, and I'm very happy to be playing for you this Irish Trans Pride. Um, I'm going to dedicate this song to uh, my deadly activist friend, Sarah R. Phillips, and I'm going to sing you a song which is about taking the rules that we have right now that don't serve us and that are not equitable and saying, fuck that, let's rewrite them. So it's a bit simple. I wrote it for kids and uh, yeah, for for the future, I suppose I wrote this. Um, shine that light, shine on, shine on. I love you. I love you. You're gorgeous. And I hope you like the song. Here we go. That's what life is for. I feel alive and I don't want to hide. Yeah, that's what life is for. I'm getting better and I'm fucking 35. Yeah, that's what life is for. Every day's a school day. You know it's true. Rewrite the rules, they're written by fools Hey, we could be equal, no one would lose And that's what life is for I'm an angry pacifist Yeah, that's what life is for I use my words like a double clenched fist Yeah, that's what life is for Oh, I trust my instincts, they help me through if it smells like bullshit, it probably is too. Hey, I'll do me and you'll do you. And that's what life is for. I'm not perfect. I'll never be. And that's what life is for. I think perfection is something you can feel. Yeah, that's what life is for. Every day's a school day. You know it's true. Rewrite the rules, they're written by fools Hey, we could be equal We could be equal We could be equal And that's why life is fine Oh yeah, I'm not perfect I'll never be And that's what life is be equal no one would lose and that's what life is for happy irish trans pride Mwah. i love you hello this is a message to all of my friends and uh colleagues uh, in the trans community uh, just to celebrate your extraordinary pride, courage, and the way you live your lives. Um, I was invited uh, by GCN and Tenney, wonderful organization that I've worked closely with over the years since I was a senator, to just send a message of really, what can I say, how much I love you all. Uh, I want to pay special tribute to um, I'm thinking here now, this afternoon, of a young lad named Danny. He was the first trans person I met when I was a senator. I was interested in the issue, very keen to extend my lens beyond um, LGB and the marriage equality issues, and I reached out to belong to. And they sent me this young lad, Danny. And I had this extraordinary conversation with him and effectively became converted um, and really believed that it was time for trans rights then. Some of you will know then I gathered a group of top class uh, human rights lawyers and produced what we consider to be the gold standard bill for gender recognition, which really influenced the ultimately the government bill uh, that was for the first time ever a recognition of not only your identity, but your right to be who you choose to be. Uh, I want to pay tribute too uh, during that period of time to uh, my friends now, um, uh, Helen and Philippa Ryder, 
the first couple that I ever met uh, when you expressed uh, the, the journey that you had and how you loved each other and you wanted to maintain your marriage. Again, that was so many years ago now, but that was during the period of producing that bill. Um, more recently, uh, having met Steve Gannon and his mother, Ashling, just incredible. Uh, I want to pay tribute especially to the parents of young trans uh, children and to say how much I want to continue to support you in different ways. And I know one of my last acts as Minister for Children was to uh, ensure that there was some uh, additional monies uh, for research to um, look at the issues around making it easier for children and young people under the age of 16 to um, make a choice uh, in terms of your identity. So, uh, of course, Lydia Foy, my dear friend uh, from all the years, Sarah Phillips, Tenny, uh, Broden, Giambroni, and all the leadership now in Tenny, all of you are just amazing people. You converted me. Um, and so many other um, parliamentarians and members of the public. And you so deserve everything that you get uh, in terms of your search for a recognition and a freedom uh, and, you, and your right to that and your happiness and, and that flows because of that. So all my love to all of you. Well done. Continue the journey and hope that you know, that this, this, as we celebrated the month of pride and as we move into ensuring that our lens includes all of the amazing and courageous people who consider themselves trans. Gosh, in many ways, it's hard to believe it's been five years since the Gender Recognition Act was passed. What an amazing end to an epic battle. I think I first got involved back in 2008 and um, when I got asked to go and talk to a couple of TDs to explain to them from a legal perspective why gender recognition was important and valuable and it being introduced to such a huge team effort it reflects all the work of the various trans people uh, willing to share their personal stories to help politicians and policy makers to understand what was important and, um, and and then everyone else who helped rally around to, to make that happen and um, I, I think it was just fabulous to be able to be involved I was really honored to be asked to consult on the various private members legislation that went through on the issue where we were trying to propose language that was different to the language that was in the UK getting to meet the civil servants who were charged with the responsibility of having to draft the legislation and helping them to see the legal value in other ways of constructing things and that the British legislation, while it had been amazing in 2004, was no longer reflecting um, best international practice and trying to make sure that Ireland became one of those countries that did have brilliant gender recognition legislation. Gosh, I remember many uh, late evenings and um, many um, conversations at all hours of the day and night as we planned and plotted and schemed for how we could persuade people to come on board. Um, I remember working with Tenney's legal working group on this, drafting various different amendments and working hard to place them with lots of different people within the Dáil and the Shannad and um, so that we could, you know, the, from the truly spectacular amendments to the much more modest ones, that all of which we hoped would be accepted. And then that big sea change that happened when marriage equality was introduced and the sort of door was blown open on understanding about how, how Ireland is a country that welcomes diversity and that is inclusive of all Irish people um, and that we were then able to get legislation that would reflect that um, for our trans community. And I just think it was amazing that within a a very short time the medical requirement was dropped the requirement to be a single person in order to make an application was dropped and our government even went so far as to introduce a scheme for young trans people for 16 and 17 year olds to enable recognition for those who haven't become legal adults it's not a perfect piece of legislation but it is a very very good one and i suppose it being introduced and it being as it was 
I think um, is a, a huge cause for celebration. The fight continues, obviously, but moments like this, an anniversary like this, it's good to pause and to celebrate the wins and the triumphs that we have had. And the gender recognition legislation is certainly one of those. Music's kind of catchy, isn't it? <laughs> so, hi, welcome back to my bedroom. Just kidding, we're here at the Jenny office. So, uh, next up, we have an amazing uh, fighter. Um, that would be the amazing portrait over here in the background. That's Broden G. Ambroni. Uh, they were the past CEO um, of Tenny Trans Equality Network Ireland. Uh, they're a passionate speech maker. And uh, let me just check the notes one more time. He's yeah, just an overall uh, uh, cool guy. Unfortunately, he was going to be live, but we do have uh, an exclusive video from Broden himself. Hi, everyone. Greetings from Toronto. My name is Broden Jambroni and I'm the former director of Tenny. As you can see, I'm still representing even from across the ocean here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm thrilled to be here um, and able to celebrate five years since the passage of the Gender Recognition Act. That's huge. Um, I can't believe it's been five years. Um, but I think, you know, it was such a momentous occasion. It was such a huge moment in my life, uh, professionally and personally. Um, so I'm glad to be able to celebrate it. Um, and I think it's so important uh, when we're looking forward at what needs to be done for trans rights across the globe, that we also look back and really mark the moments of victories, mark the moments of change. Um, and this was certainly one of those. And you know, when I think back to my proudest moment during that time and what meant the most to me, uh, the image that always pops out first is when we are outside Leinster House um, after the passage and we pop a bottle of champagne and we toast, you know, we toast Dr. Lydia Foy's 22 year uh, legal battle. We toast all of the trans activists and allies that, you know, fought, struggled um, and just pushed, pushed, pushed um, despite all the obstacles, despite all the barriers and frustrations um, who just kept going in and lobbying and advocating and telling stories about their lives and experiences and we toasted all of that and it was just it was so incredible you know it was a moment of uh, ecstasy or just being ecstatic that it had passed that this 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 work that we'd been doing was finally going to be a law um, and that folks you know would finally be able to change their birth certificates and be recognized for who we truly are you know and it was it was that moment and it was so incredible but I think it was also a moment of exhaustion um, and relief because it was the culmination of so much time and energy, so much um, sweat and tears to get to that point. And I'll always remember it. It was just, it was so incredible. But I think, you know, the entire campaign from start to finish, um, from, you know, Lydia Foy's legal case to all of the work that activists in Tenny did, that trans activists all across the country did, that our allies did, that family members did. I think that work um, and that energy that went into it, when I think back um, about what mattered most or what was the most important thing to me, it's all of that work. It's the community coming together for the first time. You know, we often make a parallel, of course, to the campaigns and around marriage equality and the referendum. Um, and the trans community was in a very different place. It was much smaller. The campaign had less visibility, but there was so much heart in it. Um, and, you know, we worked so hard and there was very little knowledge, very little understanding. And when I think back to that time, um, and certainly when I arrived in Ireland back in 2011, 
uh, and how much things have changed since then. And I think, you know, even more importantly than celebrating victories, I think it's also an acknowledgement of how far we've come as a movement. And, and I mean that in Ireland, but I also mean that internationally. So I think it's, it's important to reflect on that and to look forward because there's so much more to do. There's more to do for the legislation to ensure that non-binary folks are covered, to ensure that young folks are covered. There's so much work that needs to be done around accessing education and employment and healthcare. And these are battles that still need to be fought. So I think let's celebrate our victories and let's keep our eyes on the prize and let's just keep working. And I'm just so grateful to get to know all of you um, and to have been able to work with so many incredible, incredible activists um, and, and our allies and our families. And that has meant the world to me. And that will stay with me no matter where I go and how far I, uh, I get from Ireland. So thank you all for that. And uh, thanks for having me. Take care. Bye. Oh, what a dose. <laughs> I didn't unfortunately get to work alongside Broden, uh, but everyone has amazing things to say um, about him now. So thank you so much. I've been seeing all the gender wreck, hashtag gender wreck, uh, five years on coming through. Uh, you're all adorable. Uh, keep them coming in. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, announce the next guest. Um, we're all going to have to like be very nice because they're very shy and they're, they're they're pretty new to the community. Uh, but they they blanked their way into this show, but it's okay. We love them, so we'll let them. It is Sarah Phillips, um, <laughs> the current chair of the board of directors for trans equality network it's the other side of lexus trans equality network ireland hi it hi lou hi <laughs> hi alexis how are you i'm sure uh, i'm great it's a normal saturday night for me it's i'm loving the show and i love the guna it's absolutely fabulous um so i'll get on with the weather report now perfect and how much points for spain uh two Controversial. <laughs> 14 for uh, Afghanistan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pause the moment. <laughs> um, as I said, um, you, well, I didn't say because I lied. You aren't a stranger to the community. Um, you've done amazing things. Can you even tell us a tiny bit of what you've done? Oh, God, you put me on the spot. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've been around probably a long time. I've been out for about 28 years. Uh, I was involved in the Trans Peer Support Group. I was one of the founding members of that. Um, I had been kind of out in the community for a number of years before that. Um, you know, I was around at the time uh, Tenny started, but made a very just clear decision not to kind of take a position on this committee. Um, I facilitated the support group for a while. Um, you know, and I, I eventually became chair of Tenny seven and a half years ago now. And I suppose, like, there's been, I've been involved in a lot of different things over the last number of years. I've been on the uh, Gender Recognition Review Group, the Government Review Group, which reviewed this particular, the, the, the act that we were talking about recently, uh, or that we're talking about tonight, I should say, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was honoured to be Grand Marshal for Pride back in 2018. I couldn't believe it. Um, so, yeah, and I've, I've spoken... I suppose on trans rights throughout kind of, I suppose, the world. And uh, more recently, I've joined the International Trans Fund on their steering committee as well. So, you know, it's just a few little bits and pieces, I suppose. But just a little things, just a little thing. Sure, the, yeah. the, the quiet things people don't notice. No, you have the honour to be on the board of directors with myself. You're welcome. I am very honoured. <laughs> very honoured. <laughs> So you'd know an answer to this question. I have been very curious. How many people have even done a gender recognition search at this point? You know. Well, it's funny that you asked because I actually went look for in in preparation for tonight. I went looking. I spoke to the department, and the current figures up to uh, the thirtieth of June are now six hundred and thirty-two, um, which is quite a number. Yeah, six hundred and thirty-two yeah. in five years. So it's averaging, you know, one hundred and six a year, approximately. Um, out of those, there's 13 of them are under 18. They're 16 and 17 year olds, and um, so that's that's quite. I I suppose there's also we should note there's one refusal, 
Um, and that one refusal is because somebody applied for a non-binary um, uh, gender recognition search, and obviously because there's no uh, access to non-binary recognition currently, it was refused. So, but yeah, 632 was quite a lot. And as a percentage of kind of the popula trans population, that is actually larger than the UK figure. So it's quite, uh, quite good. More evidence and why we're better than the UK. <laughs> Very good. No, Sarah, um, we have a big announcement at the end of the show. And I know you were going to be making the announcement. Was there any chance that, like, possibly the new future chair of the board just can, can do the announcement? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Of course you can. Um, yeah, I mean, we have we have a big announcement to make later on. So, yeah, I'd be delighted for you to, to make that announcement. Definitely, you go ahead with that. Okay, I always get my way. <laughs> so thank you so much Sarah it's absolutely can I just make one point if you don't no, mind um, <laughs> so I, just, I, I just want to make two two quick points if you don't mind and I know you know me I'll always throw me, me kind of tuppence worth in I just think I, I just watched Broden's uh, video and I think it's very difficult for, for himself to kind of recognise the leadership that he um, brought through the whole campaign not only on the on trans community, but also the whole of civil society where he brought them all together. So I think we just, I would like to acknowledge his leadership because, you know, it was colossal, absolutely colossal. We wouldn't be here without him. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. We wouldn't be here without him. Um, yeah, so so that was just, I wanted to kind of put that in there, that Tubbins worked in there. And secondly, I believe just for my own sake, I'd like to put out a hello, if you don't mind, um, yeah. to a pioneering punk rocker from the States and a trans hero uh, of mine, Jane County. So if Jane's listening in, which I believe she is, I'd like to say hello to her and hopefully, uh, you know, we might get to talk someday. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, thank you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> it's very, it's very, um, it's very different for Sarah to, to talk a good bit. She's normally very shy. So uh, it's in the water today, but thanks so much for joining us. I'll let thank you go. You, um, great show, well done. Thank you. <laughs> we have Devance. We have Devance. We're friends, really. So <laughs> let's carry on with this amazing celebration. So we have some gender rec memories. We have more of them because so many amazing people were part of this amazing fight for so many years. We have to include everyone. So it's our gender rec memories and also a performance from Lady K and Veda and also a very unique experience from a VOCA reaction. Hi folks, I'm Veda, this is Lady K. Thank you for having us. Twenty-five years of my life is still trying to get up the great big hill of hope. Realized quickly when I knew I should that this world was made of a motherhood of men, or whatever that means. And so I cry sometimes when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out. What's in my head? And I am feeling a little peculiar. And then I wake. Outside, and I take a deep breath, and I get real high, and I scream from the top of my lungs, What's going on? And I say, Hey, 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 what's going on? And I say, Oh my God, do I cry? I cry all the time in this institution. And I pray. Oh my God, do I pray? 
I pray every single day for a revolution. I've been a Christ sometimes when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out. What's in my head? And I'm feeling a little peculiar. And then I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real high and I scream from the top of my lungs, what's going on? And I say, hey, 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 I say, hey, what's going on? And I say, hey, yeah, 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 I say, hey, what's going on? 25 years and my life is still Trying to get up that great big hill of hope For a destination yeah. <laughs> Thank you! Thank, Thank you, you, Kay! Ciao! Hi, my name is Michael Barron and thank you for asking me to contribute to the road to gender recognition. Um, I have many memories of that, of that road, um, including the passing of the legislation in 2015 and on that day just the sheer joy and importance that it brought to my, my trans friends. Um, I also remember meeting Broden for the very first time when he moved from Canada uh, and just been completely blown away by his calm charisma and his professionalism. Um, I also remember a deep sense of connection to Sarah and Broden and the Tenny team. Um, and there was a really strong bond there between Belong To and Tenny throughout this, this period. I think it was just a very strong shared value um, and, 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 and striving for a broad social justice um, agenda, which I think was so, so important at that time. But in a way, my memories of that period are really um, in the earlier part of that decade uh, with the establishment of Belong To as an LGBT youth group and the development of individuality, the specific trans youth group within that. Uh, so many young trans activists emerged from, from that group at that time, um, so many people who are close friends now, um, and just this group of younger people, I suppose, were emerging with different expectations of life, uh, with higher expectations and a stronger sense of their rights. Um, and I think they really created this extraordinary movement of trans youth upwards towards the legislation. Um, and it was just an extraordinary experience to have been in the middle of all that and been around that and been an ally um, at that time. So thank you so much to Tenny and to GCN uh, for recognising the significance of the fifth anniversary of the passing of the gender recognition legislation. I know we didn't have the marriage equality moment um, in this case, so it's really great to have this moment right now, to have this big celebration and massive congratulations to Tenny and the team and everybody who has been involved in this, in this road and this ongoing um, struggle. Um, thank you and see you soon. Hi, my name is Jay. I am a young person who's been attending Belong to Youth Services since I was 14. And five years ago, when we were running up to the Gender Recognition Act, I was 15 years old. I had been out for about a year as trans, and I had been getting more and more involved with Belong To in terms of the youth activism that they were engaging in. And I had been slowly finding my voice and making my voice heard as a trans young person because I was looking around and I wasn't seeing other people talking about these things that affected my life. I remember going to a consultation event with my mom and one of the youth workers from Belong To and you know I simultaneously was sitting there feeling so small and so empowered at the same time. Like I was the youngest person there, I was the youngest trans person there, I think I was the only kid there so you know I was sitting there 15 years old feeling so small in my age and in my experience but feeling so empowered to kind of represent trans young people and advocate for trans young people and show that like as a trans young person not only does it matter to you to be legally recognized but it is also something you are capable of doing you are capable of being certain and knowing who you are i'm extremely grateful that after the gender recognition act did come into effect i was able to access the act and i was able to get a gender recognition cert 
and I was one of the first few young people in the country to actually be able to be legally recognized as the gender they truly are. But I feel it's also important to accept that, you know, I was able to do that because of the privilege that I had. I had a supportive family who were able to actually navigate the system that's in place currently for 16 and 17 year olds. It wasn't straightforward and you did kind of need, you know, monetary support, not just emotional support from other people. Not only that, but there are people who are still excluded from the act, like non-binary people and people who are under 16. So I think this is a good opportunity to both celebrate the amazing win that we have in the form of the act that we have today, but also accept that there are people who are left behind and there are people we need to bring with us as we continue to move forward. What, one of the key reasons why gender recognition was uh, on the agenda back then was the work that uh, Lydia Foy and Flack had done in highlighting the issue through the courts. And it was a key commitment in the programme for government in 2011 that we would legislate for gender recognition, marriage equality, and also legislate in relation to the X case. You know, these were legacy issues that needed to be dealt with and I felt would never have been dealt with only for the Labour Party and government. So it was a real honour for me to have the opportunity to bring the legislation through both the Dáil and the Shannon. It was a real privilege to meet the families that were affected, to see the work that Tenny done on the ground. Certainly the telling of real life experience of both parents, where they have a trans child, but also in relation to individuals coming and telling their story and telling the stories to the TDs and Senators in Leinster House that allowed the easy passage through both houses. One of the personal stories that hit me very clearly uh, was uh, in 2016 when I came across an elderly lady in Donnybrook uh, that was trans, had lived, or, had lived, or, lived, lived her life, uh, but she says the sense of freedom that my own state recognises me was actually very moving and this was a working class lady that had suffered from discrimination certainly in her earlier life because people weren't aware of the issues, didn't realise there was a trans community, felt isolated for a long time but yet towards the end of her life felt that she was recognised by our own state. Like over the working out the detail of the legislation, uh, Tenny certainly played a very key role, but also there was very some very good officials in the Department of Social Protection that worked with me to make sure that we had the best outcome in relation to legislation. And I think it proved the idea of engagement, uh, and especially engagement with Tenny uh, and the families affected and the individuals affected, that we got such so progressive legislation in the time. And then I think what was very important at the end of it is because this was such groundbreaking legis legislation here in Ireland, that we actually put in a review period to make sure we got it right and see how we could improve on the legislation that we put in place. Uh, now, what we need to do is build on that for the future. Uh, there's still many issues that are affecting the LGBT community, both locally and nationally. And what I want to see is proper health uh, facilities now put in place for the LGBT community, which in many cases have not had, a, had easy access to those. And again, to raise it on an international basis is because many of those communities now are still discriminated against and in, in, and in many ways violently assaulted. And I think there's a strong role for Ireland in an international way to highlight the issues now that we have dealt with it through legislation in our own republic. Hi, good evening everybody. Today and tonight is one of celebration. We know the fight for recognition of you, who you are and of us as who we are has been a long and arduous one. Uh, yet the Gender Recognition Act was achieved thanks to the great work of all of you involved with Tenny and our trans community. You have shown how strong and beautiful this community is and of its members. I want to wish all my trans, non-binary friends and colleagues every joy on this day as we celebrate this achievement, this extraordinary milestone. Yes, we have a long road to travel. Yes, we have a long road ahead but we can walk it as ourselves, free to be who we are. Enjoy our celebration. Thank you for the memories of that epic journey in achieving a very significant milestone. 
of inclusivity and of positivity. Every one of you played a key role and together we will prevail and we will ensure that all of us are equal and that we can walk, as I said, in the freedom of being who we are. Barbua Agus Gramagus. Hi there, my name is Evoca Reaction and I am Ireland's premier non-binary drag entity. And back in 2015 when the Gender Recognition Act was passed, I was quietly celebrating because I was still in the closet as a non-binary person. But knowing that there was legal recognition for people like me and other trans and non-binary folk made it so much easier to come out when I did. Now this one goes out to all the straights and the gays, the thems and the theys that have been washed down by this cis normative system we got going on up in here. I took the immortal words of Shaka Khan and rewrote them just for you, and it goes a little something like this. Here we go! I'm every gender, I'm non-binary, yeah. Didn't mean to confuse the straights, just heaven naturally. No, 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 Well, they ask me, are you a he or she? Well, it's all the same to me. This is not a thing, I sure as shit won't meet your age. And if you find that your gender fluctuates, sing with me, don't hesitate. to conform. Anytime you feel this fire or fear, call on me and I'll be your queen.
just pure, pure joy. <laughs> ah, man, we're gentle. <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely amazing. Bre definitely a, 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 massive, a massive, like, entertainment element to the show. And um, we're very excited to announce the next person. The next person is no stranger uh, to the trans community. Uh, if anything, I think uh, it's one of the people you think of when you think of the trans community because they've been so... Uh, amazingly uh, visible. So we have Sam Blankenstein. Uh, Sam uh, was the non-binary and young perspective when it came to the campaign. Uh, Sam, along with their supporting family, uh, was on everyone's screens, everyone's radios, everyone's whatever you watch digital stuff on, you would have found the amazing Blankenstein family. So Sam, uh, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> I can, yes. Oh, very colourful. Oh, wow, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I had to dress up for the day. <laughs> me too. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to be celebrating. It's a it's a pity we're all together doing this, but we'll we'll have more celebrations later on in the year. I'm sure. We will. We will. Um. So Sam, as I said, you have been so visible, uh, in the campaign. And do you feel that like your visibility and just the amazing dynamic that you have with your family made a big difference in the end of the campaign coming up to gender recognition? So I guess I got involved with the campaign when, uh, at the time, Senator Zappone launched her bill back in 2013. Um, so that was kind of the start of, of when I got involved, although I'd done a bit of kind of speaking about trans things within the media before that. But a lot of what I was trying to do, I, like, I guess my role within the campaign was bringing trans issues to a human point. When people saw me with my family and saw me going through college and, you know, having very ordinary experiences in some respects and thriving as a trans person, I guess it made it less scary for them to maybe vote with us on the bill or um, like understand what it was to be trans. Um, it was very interesting being a non-binary person in that space because it wasn't necessarily something I spoke about. I didn't deny it. I didn't, you know, say anything else, but when we were trying to, you know, get there, get across the line, we needed self-determination and we needed young people to be included. Unfortunately, my non-binary identity became kind of the second, the second part. Yeah. Um, well, that definitely leads me uh, into um, what would you have done differently? Like we have, we see the Gender Recognition Act now for a good five years, and obviously it's not perfect. So, as a non-binary person, uh, what are, what are your thoughts on it? I guess we spent a lot of time trying to explain what trans was to people, I, and and that was just going okay. So we felt that we needed that that we identified so strongly. Um, in, in the gender we are and kind of saying look we're not scary we're not we're not out of the norm and I think we can say more than that now but I think at the time that's all we could say so now we can ask we can demand to be celebrated as the full spectrum of the trans community demand to be celebrated as people a demand to be celebrated for exactly who we are but I don't know that we could have done anything differently and I, I think I'm almost pessimistic to say that, but I think we have a chance to now. Yes. I think when, with the review and with how much Ireland has changed and how much Ireland understands us now, we have a chance to do things differently. But I don't know that we could have done differently then. But it's our duty now and for all of the trans people who've been recognised fully by this bill, by this act, to come back and fight for us as well, to fight for the young people who aren't included and to fight for the best bill that we possibly could have, which is what we now have on the table with the with the review, which really gives us all of that if it's implemented. And that's that's up to us now to, to make sure. Yeah, and I couldn't think of a better person to be behind the fight as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, no, we're not all we're not equal, so we're all equal. And it's exactly. it's it's non acceptable and it, it definitely needs improvements. Yeah. Um, Sam, uh, you're an absolute delight. Uh, thanks for bringing so much colour to the screen as well. Like, I charge <laughs> that, but okay, if you want to take that away from me, that's grand. 
<laughs> I mean, it, it's just such a fantastic milestone for the trans community. Sure. The fact that we are finally, we were finally seen. And I think one of my, one of my biggest memories was some of the quotes that came out. So one of the things that I remember saying was like, my state didn't know that I existed. The, and, and I think there's so many people who are saying, like, if I was to die tomorrow, I would not be dying as me in yeah. the eyes of the state. And so there were so many stories, so many people, like, and, and the, the messages I used to get on Facebook after I do a media interview were from young kids. So I used to get a lot of messages from 13, 14 year olds who just were like, okay, I exist and really struggling. And what's lovely is that that doesn't happen as secretly anymore. There are supports out there and the supports are much broader across the country and people there is a community and there's a young community when i first started talking i was 19 i was seen as young i was the only young person talking i mean i was going to get gender recognition no matter what i was i was over 18 but i was the young person because i was i was at a point with supportive family that i could talk openly within the media and it's brilliant that the youngest person now is not 19 we're going to have, we'd have 12 and 14 year olds if we were trying that. Yeah, yeah. And they deserve the recognition as much as any 19 year old. Well, yes, that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you go. You could talk for Ireland. Would you like to <laughs> Ireland in the Eurovision talking competition? <laughs> that's fine. Thank you so much. You've been in delight. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alexis. Bye bye. So, um, so next up, we have some gender ref memories. Again, as I said, we have so many of them. Uh, there's so many important people within this community and we need to show their voices as well. Let me just refer to my notes now. We also have an exclusive performance from uh, Dear Bertrand and the song, I think is a world exclusive. It's called Friend of Dorothy. Hope you enjoy. On behalf of Dear Bertrand, we'd like to congratulate you on the fifth anniversary of the Gender Recognition Act. So please, what are these train flying monkeys? Ruby slipper revolutionaries Stand up for your civil rights Out on the cold streets tonight When there's no place like home Establishment with the chaff and the short straw, they'll have a stuff for sure. Anti air, I'm anti establishment. They took my name and the clothes I own, they broke our hearts, but not our souls. Forest for the trees regarding our gender identity and sexuality. When there's no place like home, empty air and empty establishment. Friends of Dorothy. Fighting for your civil rights Out on the cruel streets tonight For 
with Sylvia and Marcia. Life was harder than you'll ever know. A silly place to start, where others just threw a stone. Hi everyone, it's Colm O'Gorman from Amnesty here. Um, really honoured to be joining you as we mark the fifth anniversary of the passage of the gender recognition legislation here in Ireland. And just a, a great opportunity to look back, to remember and to appreciate the extraordinary role that Tenney have played uh, uh, over so many years. From an Amnesty International perspective, we were always hugely grateful for your support in helping us to develop and deepen our understanding of the issues that trans people faced here in Ireland, uh, and that fed into our understanding of some of the work that needed to happen globally. I remember perhaps the first time that Tenny directly supported that work would have been in 2013, um, when Orla and Ben uh, did a workshop at one of our annual conferences for our activists, which I know was enormously appreciated. Uh, in 2014 then we launched the State Decides Who I Am that was a significant piece of research that Amnesty did on gaps in legislative provision for gender recognition in a number of European states with a particular focus on Ireland because as you know at the time uh, Ireland was beyond a laggard, Ireland was failing terribly in, in that regard. That's why it's fairly extraordinary really when we reflect back now um, just how much has been achieved. I know there's a lot more to do still. I, I know um, that we've more work to do and that Tenney has a lot more work to do still in this area, but tonight's a night for um, remembering and celebrating just what's uh, been achieved. Um, I know we couldn't um, have imagined those breakthroughs happening without Tenney leading the way. Um, your dignity, your courage, your focus, your determination has just been an extraordinary inspiration right across uh, the period of that campaign to secure that legislation and frankly ever since. Uh, you are truly extraordinary and um, we're very privileged and very grateful to have been able to work with you. Thanks a million, have a fantastic evening and I hope to see you soon. So. When we first realised that um, our child was transgender, um, it was a pretty difficult time for us as a family and brought me into a whole new world um, and community that I was unfamiliar with and maybe a little unsure of. Um, but 
that all changed when I met Vanessa Lacey and um, became involved in the support group Transparency, which Vanessa had only just started up at the time. Um, gender recognition was um, not something that I would have understood or even perhaps cared about before I, I joined this community. Um, but I was asked to make a submission to the Joint Interruptors Committee um, about my experience of having a transgender child and the challenges that that brought on an everyday level and how much anxiety it caused not only to my son but to all of our family. After that I took every opportunity I could to participate in the lobbying with other members of the community and you know visiting Leinster House became quite a regular occurrence. Um, Myself and two other mothers who were also part of the support group were asked if we would go and speak to John, Joan Burton, who was uh, then Tornister and uh, Minister for Social Protection. Um, and we arrived at Leinster House and we were shown up to her office where she met with us with three of her assistants. And I suppose we were quite nervous, um, wondering what type of reaction she would give us and kind of thought she, she might just be meeting us out of a type of courtesy. You know, as a mother of a trans child, you, I'm trying to explain to somebody who may not have very a lot of knowledge about what transgender is or what it's like parenting a transgender child. Um, you've no idea how that's going to go and it can be quite challenging at times. And, and we were very aware that uh, the meeting had started late and we had a very limited amount of time to push our case to her and, and gain her support. So she listened to us quite intently for a while, um, not really making any comments. But when we took out the pictures that we had brought of our children and put them out on the table, then she really started to engage with us and it became, I suppose, more real for her. And she asked lots of questions. Um, and then she started, um, she couldn't believe, she, you know, she was very surprised at the level of stress and anxiety that it caused. You know, not just our children, but you know, us as a family in everyday life, not having correct documents and having to always explain and always being, you know, kind of on the back foot. Um, she asked about school, um, and she she was actually shocked that none of our children had ever used um, a bathroom in school, not ever. And then she wrote a note to one of her assistants, and she said, "Go get Rory Quinn and bring him in here." Rory Quinn was Minister for Education at the time, so he came in. And he sat down and he talked with us as well. And he also was quite shocked with the, the, you know, the challenges that going to school presented, just, just got ordinary day school days for the kids. And he'd promised, it, promised to do what he could for us as well. And I suppose, you know, sometime later when the legislation was passed and we learned that 16 and 17 year olds had been included in the legislation, we really felt as mothers we had been heard you know not just on a political level but as a mother listening to other mothers and um, we felt really really proud um, and felt that we had really made a very good impact there so that was my experience of my gender recognition journey. Hi folks uh, Noah Halpin here um, I wish I could be coming to you from a bit of a better setting, but sure look, here we are. Um, I just want to wish everybody a very happy uh, five-year anniversary of the Gender Recognition Act 2015. Uh, I think a really, really special mention has to go out to those in particular who fought tirelessly for decades, um, especially to my all-time hero, Dr. Lydia Foy, who, who never, ever gave up. Uh, Dr. Foy fought for decades through the courts and never took no for an answer. You know, when, when she was told no, she came back again and again and again. Um, and along the way, you know, she, she was joined by some fierce trans people, uh, some, some of whom I'm very lucky to be able to call my friends, uh, like Sarah Phillips and uh, Claire Farrell, as well as... Vicky Mullins and Broden G and Brone, who all just fought tirelessly to ensure that gender recognition legislation got over the line uh, in Ireland. You know, for me personally, I was very newly out at the time. I had only told a few friends and uh, I was just on my way to kind of 
trying to discover my medical transition journey and I was very much watching gender recognition from the wings uh, not totally confident enough to step out there yet um, but I remember watching with bated breath and just hoping upon hope that this that this would get over the line and that this would work I knew I knew that it would change my life for the better and I knew that it would change the lives of of so many other trans people for the better you know in our daily lives you know we could I, ever since I legally changed my gender identity and my name I I it changes my my life every day I I my own identity is on my bank account it's on my driver's license it's on my my passport uh, it's on my birth certificate I mean I'm sitting in a hospital now with Noah Halpin and mail written on my hospital band which wouldn't have happened you know over five years ago I'm being treated like the person I am in society and that has an awful lot to do with those who never stop fighting and um, it's such an empowering thing to be able to live your authentic self and and to have your your identity recognized legally and by the state and it's something that Ireland as a whole should be proud of as you know one of the world leaders in in gender recognition but let's not forget that we do have a lot left to do and that it's not inclusive of every trans or non-binary non-binary person in the country um but you know i just want to finish off by saying a very special thank you to all of those people who fought so hard to make my life and my friends lives a lot easier bye Hi, I was honoured to have been included as part of the Tenney team to attend the Shannon on the day the gender recognition legislation was passed and sent to our president for signing into law. I grew up at a time in Ireland when we trans people had to hide ourselves away. We had to keep our secrets safe from even our closest friends and family. Then, by 2015, the time had come when our country would finally accept us, trans adults at least, as equal citizens. Sure, there is more work to be done, but that does not mean that we cannot recognise the wonderful achievements and successes we've had here in Ireland. We need look no further than across the Irish Sea to realise how hard and nasty our endeavours might have been. And in a world where we have Trump and Brexit, we must be alert to the dangers of losing that which we have already won. But in terms of memories, for me, the more special one was that day in June 2015, when the government announced that they were finally going to give us the right of self-determination and they would remove their previous demand that those of us who were married must divorce before accessing the gender recognition legislation. I can't describe how wonderful it felt that day. It was a beautiful sunny day. I was on holiday down in uh, Inchidani in Cork and I celebrated the news with a walk up Inchidani Beach. It's a beautiful beach. Now, of course I realised I was not the first trans person to ever walk that beach. But I was the first who walked that beach as an equal citizen in my own country. I want to thank all of the trans activists who worked with us to help us win that victory for our community and our wonderful allies who stood and fought alongside us. I want to acknowledge those politicians who did stick their necks out for us. And I also want to acknowledge the Irish people who by and large have allowed we trans people to live our lives free and whole. Mostly though, I want to thank my three kids who are now late teens and early 20s and who have stood by me through it all. They are truly amazing. So thank you, thank all of you for my life. Hello, 
my name is Eva Martin and I just want to talk today a little bit about what gender recognition has meant to me as a transgender woman living in Ireland today. Um, unlike previous speakers, I wasn't involved in the campaign. Um, I was still in the closet in 2015. I came out in 2016 and transitioned shortly after that. Um, so I'm one of the beneficiaries of this remarkable piece of legislation. Um, I got my cert in September 2018. There you go, number 388. And um, it's hard to describe just exactly what this piece of paper actually meant to me and means to me. I mean, yes, on one level, it's a piece of paper, but on another level, it is so much more than that. You know, if I was to use one word to describe it, I would say it's a validation. It's a validation and a recognition from the Irish state that I am who I say I am, that I am female, something I've known myself to be my entire life. Um, and I like to tell people that this piece of paper was 48 years in the making. Um, yes, I know I don't look 50, but um, and I am forever grateful for all the work and all the paths that were blazed to be for me by people like Dr. Lydia Foy, people at Tenney, and everybody who worked hard and lobbied hard to get this legislation passed, making Ireland one of the most progressive countries in the world. I never, bet you never thought you'd hear that said about Ireland when it comes to transgender rights. So, and I think that's hugely important, especially today when we look around the world and see, you know, what's happening in Hungary and Poland, in the UK and the US, um, when it comes to trans rights. So, you know, I think, you know, being able to talk to you today, just to say, yeah, this is something we should celebrate. I think it's a remarkable achievement and yes we have a long way to go and yes it's not a perfect piece of legislation but um i think we're going to get there and thank you couldn't have said it better myself Eva. <laughs> we are we're going to get there uh, listening to all those amazing um um videos uh, really did remind me where I was in 2015 when it came to gender recognition. I wasn't part of the campaign myself and as I says um, I wasn't out. Uh, I came out in 2014, went back into the closet because of the marriage uh, referendum. Uh, it was just so terrible. Uh, the, the no uh, side were quite quite aggressive uh, and it pushed me back into the closet and then I came back out again um, in 2015 thanks to the amazing fight of all the amazing people uh, that were working towards the gender recognition. Um, so we're running a bit over time but that's okay because the chats are going great you know we need to keep them natural that's what we want. So uh, let's just move on to the next bit. Uh, the uh, amazing Claire Farrell is next and uh, I'm delighted to, um, yeah, so Claire Farrell is the political side of the campaign, a um, passionate, emotional speech maker um, and was the founder of um, uh, Friends of Eon in 19, um, I don't know if she'd want me to say, <laughs> uh, hello Claire, are you there? Hello. <laughs> Um, in 1978, to be precise. Indeed, uh, I don't know if I was allowed to say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a long time ago. Um, I'm a long time around. Yeah. I never thought we would ever achieve uh, gender recognition like we have today. Couldn't have imagined it. Yeah, um, it's but such a we, feeling. We tried and we tried and... Um, then there was when uh, Tenny came, uh, got very active, uh, we really started to make progress. Uh, and I was asked then, because I was a member of 
Fine Gael at the time. Um, and part of the Fine Gael LGBT committee, steering committee. Yeah. Um, I was asked what, if I would use my, my uh, contacts and so on. Uh, at, a, at a very important uh, juncture in the uh, lead-in to the, uh, uh, the Gender Recognition Act. Claire, and, you just move the camera yeah. over just a tiny bit to, I think it's your left. Can you, can you see me? Yes, tiny bit over more. Perfect. We can see your beautiful face now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I've had, I've had technical difficulties all evening, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, so I began to lobby senior politicians uh, within the Fine Gael Party. Uh, I also did some lobbying and uh, politicians in other parties, but um, I was in a position, I suppose, to influence the Fine Gael people. And that needed to be done because Fine Gael in the early stages were not really very, very much on board. Um, and so I have to thank uh, Senator Jerry Buttermer, um, who, who back then, I think, was in the Dáil. Uh, and he did put a, a lot of pressure on other people. And um, um, and there were times when I was very frustrated and I, he knew I was frustrated and he would say to me, Claire, uh, trust me, trust me, I'm doing what I can and we'll get there. And, and he was right. He, we did get there. We um, did. And, you know, um, and eventually Fine Gael did come on board, uh, helped by the... Uh, uh, marriage equality referendum. Uh, I have to thank uh, the likes of noise, LGBT noise, because I made a speech, you probably know about it, uh, outside the dial uh, in, on Valentine's Day 2014. Yes. When yes I know it. which it's known as the departure lounge speech because I... I oh. I said that I wanted uh, to leave, leave this world. I, I said, I, first of all, I'm old. I'm, I'm now 76. Um, but uh, I said that I was in the departure lounge of life and that I wanted to leave this world as the person I am. Yeah. And thankfully, I will be able to do that. Yay! Uh, yay, yay. So... Um, so this is a great this is a great moment. Uh, five years on, there's lots of work to be done. Lots more work to be done, particularly around children, uh, or uh, you know, under 16s. Um, a huge amount of work, in my opinion, to be done there, uh, exactly. and very necessary because we have to. Um, we should uh, recognize uh, young trans kids and help them on their way. And that has to be done. Yes. Um, so um, can I just finish? Over time, Claire. Just yeah. sorry. Can I just finish thanking GCN for, for doing this project. I think it's uh, wonderful and uh, delighted that it happened. And well done to everybody involved. And well done to all the activists who did what they, we exactly. did over the, over the years. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Claire. Have a lovely afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> I'm very warm. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, an amazing speech maker there. Lovely angles. Um, we got some great angles there. But um, all that matters is that we could hear her beautiful voice because, as I says, amazing speech maker. Um, so, let's move on to the next exciting part of the show. Um, I may or may not have an announcement at the end of the show. I was given permission. Um, also, we have a performance coming up uh, from Josephine Co Sorry, I just want to make sure I know how to pronounce her name properly. Yes, Costello. It's Josephine Costello, and we have our ginger ref memories. <laughs>
Hello everyone, I'm Josephine Costello. It's great to be here. I'm really happy to be part of this evening's event to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Gender Recognition Act. I'm a singer songwriter, not so good with speeches, so I will leave that in more capable hands and quickly move on. Tonight I will perform an original song for you called You Don't Know Me. Hope you like it. Oh, you tried to degrade me You tried to drag me down You wanted me to join your crazy circus But I'm no one's performing clown I'm no one's performing clown Trapped inside your own state of mind Wrapped up in your own tiny bubble Why won't you face up to what is real? Is it too much trouble? Is it just too much trouble? You you don't know me And you will never understand How you could never control me Cause I was never yours to command I was never yours to command You, oh you don't know me so don't you treat me like a fool And don't you take me for granted Cause I'm not afraid to break some stupid rule You, oh you don't know me You, you don't know me You think that the world revolves around you You justify your small petty minded view You live a life of blissful ignorance But your fear and phobia will crucify you Your fear and phobia will crucify you you, oh you don't know me And you will never understand How you could never control me Cause I was never yours to command You, oh you don't know me so don't you treat me like a fool And don't you take me for granted Cause I'm not afraid to break some stupid rule No, I'm not afraid to break some stupid rule Oh, you, you, you don't know me You, oh You don't know me I think people would be surprised just how much work and effort was put into the gender recognition campaign. Um, there were so many meetings with politicians, workshops, 
speaking events around the country um, and the number of people who had the courage to stand up and make themselves really very vulnerable in order to tell their stories um, was really staggering. Uh, we were fighting against the trans tropes of being ridiculous and something to be laughed at or worse, being uh, something dangerous and predatory that needed to be eliminated. And so people had every reason to be afraid and to, to want to stay hidden, but they didn't. They stood up and they said, here I am, this is me, this is what I need. And that was something that made me enormously proud to be a part of. Um, the campaign was always about winning hearts and minds. Um, it was about showing that trans people weren't some nameless, faceless mass that could be dismissed without consequence. Um, standing up and saying, I'm trans, and this is what that means and how not having gender recognition affects me. Um, and for me, that was terrifying, but also hugely empowering uh, to be able to stand up in front of a group of strangers and talk openly about your experience like that. Um, it wasn't all plain sailing. I remember one particular interview on Radio Nagualta where I'd stayed up all night long learning the vocabulary to talk about gender recognition and human rights and put everything in context in, 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 that, in that way. And um, when the interview started, I was asked about surgeries and what surgeries I'd had, um, etc. And I managed to, in Irish, stammer my way through a response that was something along the lines of that's a very personal question and not really relevant, so I don't tend to discuss it. And, um, the interviewer then asked my co-interviewee um, what the greatest challenge facing trans people uh, at the moment is. And she, very annoyed, answered back stupid journalists who ask them stupid, irrelevant and ridiculous, uh, inappropriate questions about their genitalia, <laughs> which left him quite taken aback and um, took a second or two for the, the interview to continue after that, um, which is quite amusing. Um, there were also some really surreal moments, like uh, there was a time I was doing the, a photo shoot um, at Collins Barracks after being chosen as a trans champion. And I got a call during the shoot from a TD who was trying to wrap her head around why self-determination was such an important thing. And I ended up spending 20 minutes pacing up and down outside the front of Collins Barracks, explaining the difference between medical transition and legal rights to this TD with the photographer following me around and snapping pictures. And that was a really surreal moment that just sticks in my mind, I think. How you doing folks? It's David Carroll here. Uh, I'm really delighted to contribute to this video marking the fifth anniversary of the Gender Recognition Act in 2015. Uh, my memory of the time was it was a really intense period uh, leading up to the introduction of the act of advocacy and lobbying and really trying to raise awareness alongside young people and their families uh, as to the need for a gender recognition bill. Um, I know the gender recognition bill was by no means perfect and there's lots of work still to do, but I just can't think of organisations more suitable uh, than leading the cause than belong to Retenny and want to really congratulate everybody involved in the continuing fight for gender recognition, both within the LGBT community and in wider society. Happy anniversary. Hi everyone, and wow, it's five years since the Gender Recognition Act was passed. Uh, I'm Philippa Ryder, this is my wife Helen here beside me. Um, hey. We're in our uh, South Dublin home with the rain pelting on the, on the ceiling here. Um, so it was a pretty amazing time to finally be recognised by my country for who I truly am. Um, it was the culmination of a lot of work by a lot of people. I was involved in Tenny from right from the very beginning, 2004, 2005. And yeah, it was quite an amazing time. Um, I'd like to tra pay tribute to everybody who helped on that journey. Helped really make the government, make the politicians see how important the issue was. 
uh, it certainly made a huge difference to my life and to those around me. Um, one of whom is sitting here beside me. So, Helen, what were your thoughts about the whole thing? We went through the marriage equality referendum, wondering what would happen. When that passed, we knew that we were well on the way to getting the Gender Recognition Act passed. And when it did, it came as a great relief to everyone. And you obviously felt ecstatic at getting your new birth cert. Absolutely, it did. It was a, it was a really amazing time. And congratulations to everybody for being involved and working towards this. Um, there's still more work to do. It isn't perfect. But we'll get there, I'm sure, with the amazing leadership of the Tenny team. Sarah, of course, prime amongst them. So well done, everybody, and happy Pride. Happy Pride. Hi there. My name is Carol Sreen. I'm the vice chair of Tenny, the Transgender Equality Network Ireland. Five years ago in 2015, when the Gender Recognition Act was passed, I was an organiser with LGBT Noise and was involved in a lot of the lobbying that Tenny did at the time to improve the Gender Recognition Act, or bill as it was at the time. There were a lot of flaws with the legislation that was proposed, forced divorce requirement, no recognition for non-binary people, medical requirements and several other issues. And it was incredible to see the amount of work that all the staff and the board in Tenny did producing all these briefing documents for politicians to explain to them these issues. We spent months going into Leinster House, sitting in the public gallery in the Shannad, watching the debates, talking to TDs and senators and trying to get them to improve the legislation. And for several weeks and months, it was a very frustrating process. It was very difficult to, to get improvements made, although we had some incredible allies in the Oireachtas, people like Jared Crockwell and Senator Gillian Van Turnhout, who pushed for improvements to the law. But it was happening right at the same time as the marriage equality referendum. And it was very, very stressful as a queer trans person to have both parts of your identity uh, debated at the same time. But once the referendum was passed, the government then decided to drop the forced divorce requirement. And all of a sudden, a lot of the other things that we were looking for, especially getting the medical requirements removed, became possible as well. And the cabinet approved those things. And for weeks, we just, firstly, I'd been feeling anyway that we weren't going to get anywhere that this time round we weren't going to get these improvements made that it might be you know down the line a few years time they might come back and fix a lot of these things but we got not an awful lot more the first time round than we than i'd expected anyway um and it was just incredible to feel that all of that hard work that everyone had put in all these organizations coming together and lobbying the politicians and pushing that it actually succeeded and we did get the legislation improved and even though we didn't get a lot of things that were most important for me, like non-binary recognition. There was a sense that this is going to come down the line, that we've started the ball rolling and we're going to come back to this again. I remember the day that the legislation was passed by the Oireachtas and sent to the president to be signed. We were running uh, the Trans Youth Forum in Trinity College. We had a lot of young, pe young trans people come in to talk about their experiences with healthcare, gender recognition uh, and education. And to be in that space with all of those people when the news came through that it was finally passed was just a huge relief and a huge wave of kind of optimism and satisfaction. So it was a, a really, really happy memory for me. And I'm hoping that the legislation will be improved further and that the flaws that still remain and that we didn't get fixed that time around, we'll come back and we'll sort those out in the near future. The Gender Recognition Act passed in 2015. I remember feeling quite upset and disappointed that there was no recognition for non-binary people. But it was this that helped me come to terms with the fact that I was trans and it was the Gender Recognition Act and marriage equality that gave me the confidence I really needed to come out as non-binary and bisexual because it showed that the vast majority of people in Ireland support LGBTQIA plus people and their rights. Seeing the power the community had when we came together and we fought for something made me realise that people make change and that I wanted to become involved in the movement to repeal the Eighth Amendment and then go on to become a trans rights activist. 
the Gender Recognition Act wasn't something that was just handed to us by politicians. It was won by an active and vibrant campaign led by trans people. And it is this energy that we need to now go on and fight for recognition for non-binary people, intersex people and under 16s. Gender recognition wasn't the end of the struggle for trans rights. It was just the beginning. Oh my, I, exactly. I couldn't say it better. Ollie, absolutely amazingly put. Uh, the fight is not over. <laughs> um, we need to keep fighting. Uh, just let me repeat, uh, fighting for recognition for those under 18. We need to fight for um, our non-binary siblings as well. It's not acceptable. So, the big announcement, <laughs> the big announcement, I'm sorry, I've been teasing it the whole time. So the big announcement, I'm just going to keep talking about this big announcement and not actually announce it. But by saying big announcement, I'm building up, the, <laughs> building it up. Um, so I'm very proud to announce that Tenny Trans Equality Network Ireland, I got to write that time, normally I go that way, has appointed a new CEO. <laughs> <laughs> the new CEO um, best describes themselves as an educator, an activist, and a contributor. Uh, they are residing currently right now in North Carolina, so we can't wait to get them over here. So their name is Erin Carol. Hiya. Oh my God. Loving the hair. Thank you. How are you today? I am doing good. How are y'all? I am. Oh, y'all. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> See how long it sticks around, you know, once I move, if I still say y'all or pick up a different, you know, word. See how long the accent lasts when you come over here and yeah. we, we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when actually are you going to be able to get over here? Oh. And, you know, Hope, in. you know, it's about time. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully as soon as possible, you know, with everything going on with COVID and travel restrictions, exactly. looking at everything that's going on, that as soon as I can be in Dublin, I hope to be there. Good. We can wait to have you. Yeah. Um, so what do you uh, feel you're going to bring to the role of skin the sun interview? You already got it. <laughs> um, no, I'm really looking forward as a person mm -hmm. on the board directors i'm so excited uh, to work uh, alongside you and um yeah you must have some uh, i don't know if it's a compliment or not but i feel like you're going to bring some young energy to the job uh, you're giving off this very like artistic kind of young uh, uh, vibe <laughs> yeah no like i am so excited to work with everyone that's already on staff and on board at tenny just being part of this even live stream and seeing the work that like Dr. Foy did over the last 22 years to build such a foundation in Ireland for the acceptance and recognition of trans lives means we now have the opportunity to keep fighting and collaborating to see under 16s get the recognition they deserve, to see intersex identities get recognized, to see non-binary identities get ident like recognized as well. and. The staff already over there has done such amazing work. They're all experts and Tenny is in such amazing position to just keep their foot, I guess, on the pedal, as we would say in the US, to just keep going, um, to keep growing and to continue to be that community organization that will continue to fight until everyone has full equality. Um, I think Sarah said it really good. I saw in an article from like five years ago she said, self-determination is at the core of our human rights. We are the experts of our own gender identity. And that's going to continue just to be the core of everything we do is recognizing that as trans people, we are who we say we are. And that deserves celebration and it deserves recognition and protection. True. I definitely feel like we're in good hands. We made a good decision. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, it's been an absolute delight. Um, mm -hmm. I'll leave you with one thing. Um, you will be coming to Dublin, so this should be a term that you should know. Your own myself. It means you're you're <laughs> you're quite beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. 
<laughs> I'll have to look that up and practice it so that I get all of the accent right and don't butcher it. There's nothing worse than a culture trying to do a Dublin accent. That's oh. me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dublin. <laughs> so it's been a delight having yeah. you. And I can't wait to um, see you in person. Yes, exactly. Have a lovely day, night, actually. <laughs> good afternoon. It's all good. Afternoon. Thank you. Have awesome. a lovely afternoon. Yes, bye. Bye. So, wow. Um, so that means we have come to the end of the show, but it's not the end of the fight. Right? <laughs> Basically, right, let me say this because I want to say it properly because it's important to me. So the fight is not over. We need to fight for our siblings who are under 18, uh, even 16. We have slight recognition for uh, our amazing siblings who are 16 to 18, but we need better recognition for them. We also need full recognition for our trans siblings who are under 16. Also, non-binary people deserve their recognition too. It is not over. We are not equal until we are all equal. <laughs> Right, yo. But as I said, it is coming to the end of the show. So I want to say a massive thank you so much to GCN, to Tenny, to Martin, to Luke, to Katie, to Lisa, everyone. I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna get in the habit of saying names because I'll leave someone out. So we are let me I want to make sure this is important. Also, I want to say a big happy birthday to Kate. You are amazing so at the same time the show will be over soon but we still need your support these uh support financially it makes a big difference uh, if not if you don't care about us at least care about me i have been in these heels since two o'clock i am a wrecked I need your support. No, gcn needs your support so we can emphasize the trans voice in the community that is gcn to 50 300. I love waiting for it to come up to make sure it's correct. <laughs> so, massive thank you so much to everyone. You're only massive. If you want to come and join me, if you want to see more of my beautiful face, my name is Alexis Riva or Alexis's Transition on YouTube, which has made me famous. I'm not famous. Don't give me a big head. But you see the little thing in the background? You see the little thing there? The little G. I want a gala. I'm a digital change maker. Yeah, I don't know how I won. But I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to go with it. So thank you so much. I'm going to end it on a big note. We're going to leave it with a song I I really enjoy. It's a great song. Um, so thank you so much for everyone joining in. And have a lovely day. Um, bye. Oh. Oh, technical issue. Uh, play the song, please. That's awkward.